Hello, my friends. It is now Thursday, the fifth week of Lent, and I love so much the area of scripture that we get to be in together today. First, let's start, though, with the title for today's devotion. The title for our devotion today is The Emotions of God. And now, friends, we get to take our Bibles and we get to open them to Philippians 1 so that we can read verses 3 through 11 together. They are so good, my friends. So, so good. You definitely want to have your Bible open on your end, okay? So please do take the time to do that. Press pause, get yourselves all set up, and then when you're ready, you press play again and we'll read them together, okay? Philippians 1, 3 through 11 says this, I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart. For you all are partakers with me of grace, both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness, how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment, so that you may approve what is excellent and so be pure and blameless for the day of Christ filled with all the fruit of righteousness that comes through Christ Jesus to the glory and praise of God. Oh, friends, isn't that just the best? Oh, it's so great. I have sent so many messages to the people that I get to volunteer alongside or serve alongside here at Trinity. And I, always, I, I like to include that because when I think about them, when I pray about them, I do thank God in my remembrance of them. There are people who are flooding to my mind right now. And you know what, friends? You right there on the other side of the screen who I know are pressing play, play on your side. Like, I thank God when I remember you. In all my remembrance of you, I'm so thankful that for whatever reason, this has found a place in your day. And I thank God for you. So these verses right here that Paul wrote, huh, I could have written them myself. Now, friends, let's continue on with our devotion. Centuries before Jesus' birth, philosophers were struggling to understand human emotions. Hippocrates, well, he speculated that a person's health, including emotions, listen to what he connects them with. This is going to just be almost kind of gross. Including emotions was governed by the interplay of four humors, black bile, yellow bile, phlegm, and blood. That that's what controlled our human emotions. Wow, wild. Now let's see what Aristotle thinks. Aristotle connected emotions to a person's quest to live virtuously. Well, today there are numerous theories about human emotions. We know there are cognitive and physiological elements. The brain perceives stimuli, hormones are released, the body has a physical, even visible response to the stimuli and hormonal triggers. But in many ways, the complexity of our emotions it still mystifies us. Jesus has emotions just like we do. He wept at the death of his friend Lazarus. He had affection for Jerusalem. He had compassion. He became angry. He experienced anxiety and turmoil. He was zealous for the salvation of his people. Jesus' fervent desire that everyone would receive forgiveness and be reconciled to God led him to the cross. That's what led him there. His emotions still bind his body, the church, together today, just as Paul wrote to his brothers and sisters in Philippi. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, let your desire for the salvation of sinners be our zeal too. In your name we pray, amen. Amen. Oh, friends, this is such a good one, right? And I think it's good for us because we are emotional people, aren't we? We really are. And sometimes we might be led to believe that our emotions are wrong, are sinful even maybe, that they are misguided or unimportant. And today, our devotion really emphasizes, well, a couple things. One, that Jesus had emotions 
And so if Jesus had emotions and he never sinned, that means emotions are okay. It's okay for us. It's okay for us to cry when someone dies. It's okay for us to have affection for a place and people. It's okay for us to have compassion. It's okay for us to become angry. Hmm, I wonder what that looks like. Maybe that's something that you can discuss after this video ends. What does righteous or sinless anger look like? Hmm, I honestly would love to sit in on this conversation with you. I love you so much, my friends, and I'll meet you back here tomorrow. Bye.